Mm-hmm. Yes, Jewish. yes, of course. Mm-hmm. Uh, his um, brother actually was in the uh, Zionist movement as well, David, David Miliband. Perhaps not, obviously, an Orthodox no, no, Jew, yeah, yeah. given he had a bacon sandwich. Pro- so, <laughs> <laughs> so uh, and now let's welcome someone from the UK Independence Party into our discussion. I'd like to welcome Mr. Matt Davis from the constituency of Woking. Welcome to Straightforward Levant TV. Hi there. Mr. Davis, uh, while the UKIP is more focused on controlling immigration from within the EU, what is it that some individuals seem to portray the party as anti-Islamic? Okay, so UKIP believe that one of the core tenets of being able to call yourself a nation is the ability to control your uh, immigration and control your borders. Um, unfortunately, uh, throughout the years, Labour and Conservative governments have given that right away. And the European Union, um, and effectively an unelected bunch of commissioners in the European Union, now make those border laws, plus a lot of other laws, uh, that they really should not be, in, in our opinion. Now, on the, on the anti-Islam piece, UKIP is not anti-Islam. If you look in the manifesto for UKIP, there is not a single anti-any group policy in there. Yes, there are pro-British uh, policies in there, and we are unashamedly uh, support putting the British people first. But Islam, we haven't got a problem with Islam. We haven't got a problem with any religion. What we do have a problem with, and this may be why the far left, uh, the establishment and the EU forces attack us on this issue, is we speak the truth. And that means if there's a fascist element of any group, and let's, let's be honest, there is a small percentage of Islam that does have that problem, just like most other groups have, then yes, UKIP will speak out loudly against that sort of element. And that's where our enemies, the people in the establishment and the hard left, they use that at every opportunity to try and paint us into being something we're not, thus to try and quell the, the support that is rising every single day here in Britain for UK. Mr. Mr. Omar Smail here from the Labour Party in the constituency of Watford would like to interject. Okay. Well, of course, uh, I think uh, Mr. Davis uh, seemed to uh, forget what his leader has said about the Muslims being a fifth colonist. I'm proud of being a Muslim. I'm, br- I'm proud of being a British citizen that lived in this country perhaps longer than Mr. Davis has been on this earth. I have, uh, I have contributed to life in Britain uh, uh, to, in, in many uh, degrees. Uh, Mr. Davis seemed to forget also that one of, his, uh, one of the comments that uh, Mr. Farage has made uh, recently in a public speech, uh, sorry, in a private speech, that it is not compatible being uh, English and a Muslim. And I think, you know, having heard what Mr. Davis said, they probably, is probably have a, a selective uh, uh, memory of what his leader is saying. Okay, can I come back on that? Of course. So, you're absolutely painting Mr. Farage to, to say things that he's never actually said. When he, when he talks about a fifth column, he doesn't mean all, all of Islam. He absolutely has never said that. And he absolutely means the small element that do want to change Britain to be an Islamic state. Um, there are these people. Where is your evidence of this? Where is your evidence that oh, there is? Go there on is... to Google and do a search for Adam Chowdhury. Go and do a search for the, the ISIS marches in London. There's plenty of evidence there is a small fascist ah, element. Small. It's small. small. Absolutely yeah. small. small. I don't. I don't. It's not that entire Muslim uh, community in Britain, Mr. Davis. Of course not. My Walking should be proud. Show, Walking should be proud that it had the first mosque in Britain built well before you and I were born. Yeah. Uh, and uh, there is a huge heritage, Islamic heritage, in Britain that you maybe you and Mr. Farage are ignorant of. Uh, See, this Muslims, Muslims, Muslims in this country that? have contributed. Uh, Muslim in this country have contributed to the life uh, uh, of the whole country. No one's Muslims have that. fought for this country. No one's arguing yeah. with that. Uh, so for you and Mr. Farage to come along and We're simply not. denounce a whole uh, religion 
We it's don't. It's unacceptable. But Mr. Mr. Ismail, uh, one second, Mr. Davis. Mr. Ismail, uh, like Mr. Davis just said, it's a small, uh, perhaps a minority within the Muslim British community that, that has the rhetoric of the likes of uh, but, Anjum but, Chowdhury, the fascist mentality. But it takes only we are a against few. against those as well. Yeah, but it takes only a few to cause havoc in the country. Yeah, well, exactly. But Mr. Farage also said mm -hmm. it's not compatible being English and Muslim. He didn't I, say I, that. I know. I followed the news fairly closely. Mm -hmm. And I must say, I've never heard Nigel Farage say that. I don't know where you get your basis. Say what? That, that, that it's incompatible to be a Muslim and English. That was Mr. Omar Yeah, yeah. yeah. This, this is the problem with Labour. They are absolutely willing to tell lies to try and further their agenda. They will paint anyone as evil and nasty to try and promote their party, which actually bombed Muslim countries against the people's wishes. Let's not forget that. They actually killed thousands of Muslims, which UKIP was massively against. So it's, it's really hard to take having someone from Labour preaching to us with, on, the, on a basis of lies. Yes, and Mr Davies, uh, on housing, the UKIP manifesto mentions bringing empty homes back to use in Britain. Now, under the current government, British people in the capital's prime locations are selling the properties by, because they're tempted by the good offers from foreign buyers which ends up in a change of demographics with many properties being vacant and the capital losing its authentic vibe. How is this going to affect British voters this time? Okay, so this is a huge issue in Britain. People in this country have always had the right and the aspiration to own their own homes. Mm. Right now, because of the unlimited mass immigration that the EU has imposed on us, we have a net immigration flow of what's been reported as 300,000 per year. That has pushed up prices because these people have to live somewhere. And there is a massive need to, one, stop allowing mass immigration, thus cutting the demand, and two, then address the supply side as well. So mm. UKIP has got a number of policies to do both. Obviously, getting control of our borders back will help us make sure we have reasonable levels of immigration, positive immigration like we've always had in Britain, and we actually do like and enjoy having new people come and give us their cultural input. What we also will do is we, we will stop people being able to buy homes from abroad when the schemes that they're buying them from are things like housing association sales and right to buy. Those schemes were for British people to own their own homes, not for people to make a fast buck. On top of that, one more thing, UKIP will also look at all of these empty properties that are in, in the country. There are a lot of empty properties where very rich, wealthy people from abroad have bought them up and are using them to just make money off of the insane house price inflation caused by mass immigration. Mm. Obviously, cutting the mass immigration will stop that massive inflation back to normal levels. But we will also have a, a situation where if homes are left empty for more than two years, then UKIP will look to, and it says this in the manifesto, will look to increasing the taxation on those. Mm. So people who are buying them simply to make a fast buck, it will become less, less of a, an incentive. Plus, we will use any money used from that to help build housing stock on brownfield sites so yes. that people once yes. again can own homes. Mr. Davis, uh, when it comes back to uh, EU migration and the referendum that is uh, almost promised by the current Prime Minister, uh, should he win another term in, in government, uh, do you think there will be a, re a referendum under the current Conservative uh, rule? Now, unfortunately, the Conservatives have got a lot of form in this area. They, they lied us into the EU in the first place by telling us we wouldn't lose sovereignty, and that's absolutely happened. Um, but successive Conservative governments have promised the referendums. They promised us one on Lisbon. Um, he said he would ne not let it lie if the Lisbon Treaty went through, and he let it lie completely. Also, um, if, if we look at the state of this election, everybody knows there's not going to be a majority. The Conservatives have got absolutely no hope in hell of getting a majority. And Cameron is banking on that 
because he knows he will then not have to deliver a referendum because the Lib Dems or whoever he jumps into bed with will, will be a convenient excuse not to give a referendum. Mm. The guy's a fraud, basically, and if the British people aren't waking up to this by now, I, I don't know what it's going to take. Mr Matt Davis, member of the UK Independence Party in the constituency of Woking, many thanks for being on the show. Thanks a lot.